Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to graph a polynomial function. Now, in graphing a polynomial function, you know, typically, probably, I would say the best thing to use would be a calculator or to use your um, or to use you know, a phone. You can even type into Google and graph it. Um, however, in the traditional kind of sense of mathematics here, we do still want you guys to understand you know, what the, the facets are graphing because, um, and what that means for a polynomial because that is going to trans transcend into different, poly um, to different functions that we'll be dealing with. So really kind of knowing the basics of it is going to be very helpful. Um, because just like graphing a quadratic, a linear function is going to be the same thing to graphing polynomials to higher orders. The main important thing here is I'm only going to do four graphs. We want to be able to determine uh, the x-intercepts, the y-intercepts, right? Just like a quadratic or um, a linear equation. But when we have terms to a higher order, when we don't have a calculator, it's very important to also understand you know, the end behavior of the graph. So the first thing I like to do um, when graphing is determine kind of the end behavior of the polynomial. And remember, by using the end behavior, we're going to use the leading coefficient test. So that's in a totally different video. However, I will kind of go over it a little bit here. Uh, the end behavior to determine using the leading coefficient test, we have to have our highest power first and then going down in descending order. So you can see up here, um, we look up here and we have our highest power, which is 3. And then the um, powers are going down in descending order. Since that is odd, we know that it's either going to fall left, rise right, or rise left, fall right. So to determine the difference, we've got to look at our leading coefficient, which in this case is a positive 1. Since that a leading coefficient is positive 1 and our degree is odd, we know that the end behavior is going to fall left, rise right. I have no idea what the rest of this graph is going to look like. But all I know is the graph falls left, rises right. The next thing I think is probably the easiest to be able to go and do is find the y-intercept. Now remember, uh, or the y-intercept or the f of x intersect. Because really, when you're dealing with the function, you're not dealing with the x and the y axis. You're dealing with the x and the f of x axis. So when we want to figure out um, x is equal to, yeah. So when we want to figure out where the graph is going to cross on the f of x axis, we realize that the x value is going to be 0. So to find the y-intercept, all I'm simply going to do is plug in 0 in for x. Therefore, I get negative 2. Okay. So now I'm going to go down to negative 2, and I'll make it a nice big dot. Now, the last thing we need to do, though, is find the rest of the zeros, right? Where else does the graph, where does the graph cross the x-axis? So remember, to find the x-intercepts, we've already done a lot of practice with this. To find the x-intercepts, we're going to have to use um, factoring. We're going to want to set now, the x-intercept is when f of x is equal to 0. So we're going to set this equal to 0. And then we'll have x cubed plus 2x squared minus x minus 2. Now we need to go ahead and solve this. And to go ahead and solve this, basically what we're going to have to do here is to factor. And we are going to, in this case, factor by grouping. So I'm going to group the first two terms and the last two terms. 0 is equal to here. Factor out now the GCF. These have in common a x squared. When I factor out an x squared, I'm left with um, an x plus 2. Then over here, I can factor out a negative x. When I factor out a negative x, I'm left with an x plus 2. Now I can factor out an x plus 2. Actually, let's just use red, because I think that's what everybody's familiar with. So I'll keep that. So now I'm going to factor out a common factor of x plus 2. And I'm left with an x squared minus x. What am I doing? That's a minus 1, not a negative 1. So I factor out a negative 1, not a negative x, because this doesn't have an x. So I factor out a negative 1. Now I use a 0 product property to set my, both of my factors equal to 0. Okay, Subtract 2, subtract 2. x equals negative 2. So that's one of my zeros. So I'm going to go over on my x-axis and put a dot at negative 2. Then over here, um, I don't really need my parentheses. So I'll add one, add one. x squared equals 1, square root, square root. x equals plus or minus. The square root of 1 is 1. So therefore, I have negative 1 and at positive 1. Now. It's important for us to understand, again, what about the uh, multiplicity? Because now multiplicity is so important. It's going to be so helpful now in helping us graph. So when we look at multiplicity, remember when multiplicity was odd, that means the graph crossed. When multiplicity was even, that means it touched and rebounded. Well, we go back over to our factors. And even though this isn't our linear factor, we could factor this down to the linear factors, which would be x plus 1, x minus 1. But in both cases, you see that the 
power of my factors is 1, so it's going to be odd. So that means my graph is going to cross, cross, and cross. So now, to graph it, yeah, calculators are nice and are easy, but this isn't too bad. It's kind of like a game. You're going to start with your, with your end behavior, go through your first 0, go through the next 0, cross the y-intercept, go through the next intercept, and then graph. Now, it doesn't look as pretty as it possibly could. Um, but you can obviously see now that we have our three zeros and, every, and the y-intercept, and we're all good. OK, so uh, now let's go and get to the next one. And we'll start like picking it up over here a little bit. Uh, for, so for the next one, let's find the y-intercept. So I'll do f of x equals negative 0 to the fourth minus 16 to the 0. Well, hopefully you understand that 0 raised to the fourth power times negative 1 minus 16 times 0 is just going to be 0. Good. All right, so now the next thing is let's find, oh, let's find the end behavior. Duh. I forgot to do that first. End behavior, again, we look at our degree, um, our leading term. You can see here we have a, our degree, which is 4, and our leading term in this case is now negative 1. So Remember when our degree is even, that either means our graph rises left, rises right, or falls left, falls right. And that's all dependent on uh, the leading coefficient. If the leading coefficient negative, it's going to fall. If it's positive, it rises. Since this is negative, we know our graph is going to fall left, fall right. Ah, it does that again. Ah, well, that does too positive. OK. Um, oh, no, that one's negative. Let's make this positive. OK, so um, we know our, our y-intercept is going to be 0. Now let's go and figure out our x-intercept. So that's going to be 0 equals negative x to the fourth minus 16x. OK, um, whew, so now we need to factor uh, or look into factoring this. And basically, what I'm looking into, was that my problem? That's negative x to the fourth minus 16x squared. I wrote the problem wrong. My bad. OK, so now when we look into factoring, we can see that they both share um, a negative or a, that should be plus, right? Yeah, it's plus. Jeez. <sighs> Sorry, I guess I was in a little bit of quick of a hurry and I didn't write down the problem correctly. Um, so now you can see I'm going to want to factor out a negative x squared. Um, they both share an x squared. And I always like my first term to always be positive. So factoring this, I'm going to factor out an x squared, or a negative x squared, and that's going to leave me with x squared minus 16. Okay? And the reason why I'm looking at that is you can see when you're looking at for that negative uh, x squared minus 16, that's going to provide you with the difference of two squares. So I can set uh, this equal to 0. You can divide by the negative 1. That's really the only thing that negative really is doing is telling us our end behavior. We can divide out a negative 1, or I could write this like this, um, negative times x minus 0 squared. Here, I can factor this into x minus 4 equals 0, and x. Actually, let's just factor that out. I don't want to overly confuse people. So what I'm going to do is say 0 equals negative 1 times x squared times x minus 4 times x plus 4. Basically, what I did is I factored x squared minus 16 using the difference of two squares. Now I can set these all equal to 0. Now the number here, that's really not a part of our, um, that's really not a 0. That's not a 0. It's only going to be dealing with your x's. So this we can really divide out. So it's really not affecting our graph. It's just helping us with our end behavior. So I can divide a negative 1 on both sides and really get it out. So therefore, I have x squared equals 0 or x minus 0 squared equals 0, whatever way you want to look at it. Then I have x minus 4 equals 0 and x plus 4 equals 0. The reason why I rewrote this is because whenever you solve, you know, you take the square root on both sides, we know that x is equal to 0. But I'm rewriting it this way so that we can see that, oh, the factor has a power of 2. That means the multiplicity is going to be even. Very important to have even multiplicity. Here, I'm going to have positive 4. So I add 4 on both sides. So x equals 4. Here, I subtract 4 on both sides. x equals negative 4. So now, let's go and plot the zeros. Well, we already know 0 is the x-intercept. Well, that's already also the y-intercept. We have positive 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And we have negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. OK, so again, so the graph has to cross here, here, and here goes up. Well, now, remember, at 0, it's even. So it's going to touch, rebound, and go back up, and then come back through. OK, 
Okay, so it kind of looks like a nice little M here for you. All right. Um, Let's go and take a look at this one. So again, here, um, m behavior, you can see now we have an even one again. And, but now our leading coefficient is positive. So my m behavior is going to rise left, rise right. Again, I don't know what the graph looks like, but I'm just going to put those arrows in there so I remember what my leading um, or what my m behavior is. Then the next thing is find the y-intercept. That's always the easiest, right? f of x equals 2 times 0 to the fourth minus 4 times 0 cubed. Again, it's the same intercept, 0. Awesome. Um, now, the next thing is find the x-intercept, which isn't always so awesome. But then all we do is we set 0 in for f of x, and we go 2x to the fourth minus 4x cubed. Now, we just go ahead and find um, that by factoring. So you can see here they both share a 2 and an x cubed. So I have 0 equals 2x cubed. And when I factor out a 2x cubed, I'm left with an x minus 2. Okay. Um, OK. So now I can use my zero product property. And I can say 0 equals uh, 2x cubed. And x minus 2 equals 0. Well, solve, divide by 2, divide by 2, 0 equals x cubed. Take the cube root, take the cube root. x equals 0, which we already knew. And then we have x plus 2, which is over here, 1, 2. Hmm. 4x cubed, did I write this down? I'm not sure if I wrote this down correctly, so I'm going to double check my answer here real quick. Oh, that one looks really weird. OK. Ah, I see. Well, OK. I didn't double check the answer of that on that one. That would have made sense. So we have two odd multiplicities. And you know, using the graphing would really, really help um, for on this because, OK, and, and they, to use extra points, you know, it probably would have been best to type in 1 to see what that value is. Because I'm trying to look at this. I was graphing. I was thinking I had a brain fart. And I apologize for that because I, um, I forgot to graph on as far as remembering the answer. But Usually on a fourth degree, you know, we know it's going to go through and up. So let's go ahead and plug in another answer, another number to kind of see what this work out. Because it can't really bound. Um, it's not going to look like a quadratic. There's something else to it. So if, let's plug in 1. So if I did 1, I'd have 1 to the fourth power, which is 1, times 2. So I'd have 2 minus 1 cubed is 1 times 4 minus 4. So that would be negative 2. So the way that. My calculator showed here as I go down negative 2. So it kind of looks like a cubic function. Then it comes up right through on there. So it's kind of like a mix of a cubic and a parabola kind of looking there. And it kind of looks a little funky. But those are your two only intercepts, 0 and 2. And they both are odd. Okay, So they're not going to be bouncing at all like they did over here. Um, all right, so let's get into the last one here. Um, now, in this case, before we get into the end behavior, we notice that it's not in my degrees are not in descending order, right? We have to have our highest power first. So the first thing we do is going to rewrite this in descending order. So that's negative x to the fifth plus 6x cubed minus 9x. Now you can see that my uh, degree is 5, which is odd, and it's negative. So therefore, my graph is going to rise left, fall right, OK? The next thing is to determine what the y-intercept is. So in this case, you can see, again, it's going to be 0. Uh, the next thing we want to do now is determine what the, uh, ah, determine, now we want to determine what the x-intercepts are. So we're going to set this equal to 0. And then I'll rewrite this as a negative x to the fifth uh, plus 6x cubed minus 9x. Now again, when solving, solving this, I like to always see if I can factor out the GCF first. And I always like to make my first term positive. So I'll factor out a negative x. That's going to leave me with the positive x to the fourth 
um, minus 6x squared plus 9. Okay. Um, you can see here that's going to be a difference of two squares that we're going to have. Um, so I can set these both equal to 0. So I have negative x equals 0, divide by negative 1, divide by negative 1, x equals 0, which we already have. So that's going to be an x-intercept we already know. Then here, this one kind of gets a little confusing here. Um, I'm not going to go through the whole steps of factoring x to the fourth like we did before. Um, you know, but basically, I would say is you know, think of x to the fourth as x squared. Think of x squared as just x, and then just factor it normally. However, I notice, I look at this, and I see that this can be factored then into x um, squared minus 3 squared equals 0. Okay. Um, so now, basically, what I'm going to do is, um, so now, basically, I can see here that now they're going to have a multiplicity of 2, whereas this had a multiplicity of 1, so I know it's going to cross. But over here, these two zeros, I set, up, set them up um, x minus 3 equals 0. So I add 3, add 3, and I get x squared equals 3. Square root, square root, x equals plus or minus 3. So my two zeros are plus or minus 3, or the square root of 3, which is you know, roughly 1 point um, something. It's going to be between 1 and, one and 2. Uh, so I'm just going to estimate those. So let's just say they're, you know, rough, they're between 1 and 2, 1 and 2. Now remember, these are going to have an even multiplicity, not because the x is squared, but because their factor was squared. So since their factor is squared, these have even multiplicity. That means they're going to rebound. Okay, um, They have to cross here. So it has to rebound, cross, rebound. Even multiplicity, odd multiplicity, even multiplicity. Again, these are your two even multiplicities. This was odd because this had the factored form was x to the first power, or is really just a factor to the first power. So to do this, I'm going to go from here, rebound, cross, rebound. Okay, and therefore, there, um, there you can see, ladies and gentlemen, that um, you know your x-intercepts is now going to be at um, plus or minus the square root. Sorry, plus or minus the square root of three are going to be your x-intercepts. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you use the m behavior to m behavior, y-intercept, x-intercepts, factoring and multiplicity to graph a polynomial. Thanks.